all right welcome back to this channel and uh, i'm damien serongoma who is still taking you through a desktop publishing we want to look at something new today we want to learn how to create a flyer we want to learn the basics of uh, desktop publishing but our project that we're going to work on we are centering down to creating a flyer using basic knowledge that you can possibly think of like i said in the previous section is that uh, we need always to look out for the size of the paper the size of the paper is very very important otherwise if you do not select the right paper size your publication will be uh, affected how do we select the right paper size all we need to do is to select uh, click at uh, file and then select uh, page setup once you select the page setup you realize that yes we have this page setup and then uh, you are going to look at different sizes of paper that you can have these different sizes of paper will enable you to select the right choice that you need to work and the orientation we are going to work with a size that is half of a4 and that will give us a5 so just hold a paper from your printer possibly and then hold it vertically then fold it to be halfway once it is halfway it will form the size of a5 and that is the size that we want to work with but when you look at the orientation we need to select the orientation of landscape why do we call it landscape is because normally when you draw a landscape you will draw it horizontally not vertically so we shall select this orientation there are two orientations we have the horizontal orientation what we call the landscape and then the vertical orientation that we call portrait we want to take the landscape orientation and we want to take something smaller half of the original paper that is normally used in printers so click at that and it will give you the dimensions there click OK alternatively you simply double click at it one two and it will launch uh, your work area the area where you are supposed to be operating from the area where you're supposed to be working your working uh, or editing your work from now you realize that uh, in this work area we majorly have the edges of our paper and then we have the borders so you realize that yes we need to use the entire paper so what do we need to do it is a good practice that you need to push these borders to the edges of our paper let's do that all I need to do is to rearrange the setup of my page this time I'm not going back to the whole to the page setup no I need to go direct to the arrange we want to arrange our paper select arrange and then select the layout guides So once you select the layout guides it's going to enable you to adjust 
the margins. You can push the margins to the left. We have 2 centimeters from the left, 2 centimeters from the top, and 2 centimeters right, and lastly at the bottom, 2 centimeters. We want to work with the margins. Margin guide. Let's reduce it to 0. Do the same thing for the rest. So as you reduce the margins, you realize that it once it reaches 0, it will have touched the bottom. Click OK. And realize that now the blue lining appears at the edge of our work area. So that means we are going to utilize the entire page. The entire work area is going to be utilized. What next? We need to select the content and the files, the e-content that we need to use in our publication. Whenever you're working or using a publication or software of your choice, it is right for you to make a selection of the content that you want to communicate. Selection of the right content helps so much to deliver the message to the right person through the right channel and the media that you have selected to use. In this case, the media that I'm selecting to use is digital and it's going to be later on published using a printer, making it hard copy. And we are interested in creating a flyer. After selecting the right media and the right tools, which the tool that we are using is Microsoft Publisher, then we need to look at the content. What do we need to communicate? We want to communicate something to do with farming. We want to tell the public out there that yes, we need proper farming. You need to possibly come for an event and we are going to train people on the proper procedures and the methods of modern farming. If you have chosen that to be your theme, then you need always to look at the colors. Selection of the right colors is important. Otherwise, if you use colors that do not match with your theme, no one will be interested in seeing your publication. No one will be interested in uh, getting to know whether you have the right publication or not. So we need always to have the right choice of the colors. The right choice of the colors is very, very important. So that means when you look at the color selection, we need always to know that we have what we call the background color and then we have the foreground colors. Let's look at what we need. We need text. So on your toolbar, on your toolbox, click at the text box. You can drag it, bring it next to you. And then I need the text box. Click and hold down the left mouse button, then drag the mouse. And then we begin typing to insert our text. Modern farming in Africa. Let's call it Afro farming. Something to do with Afro farming. Or Afro farm Africa. Afro farm Africa. And we delete out this. So you realize that I'm using the techniques of editing my text and simply relying on the techniques of Microsoft 
of word processing to be precise. So all I need to do is to delete it out. And then because this is the main theme, I need to make it bigger so that whoever sees my publication, the word Afrofarm Africa is an eye-catching word. So, so we want to make it bigger enough so that we can uh, utilize all that we need. Afrofarm Africa and I'm reducing this. Then we can possibly need to get some images to use to ensure that yes we have our theme there but it is illustrated. It is a good practice that you do not use too many images. Do not use too many images. Otherwise you will suffocate your publication. Let's insert an image. So all I need to do is to click at insert because I want to insert an image. Click at insert and select picture. Picture from where? Is it coming from a clip art? No, it's coming from a file. So navigate to where you have your pictures. My picture have a picture on the desktop, so I'll select desktop. I don't see desktop there, so I'll select PC and then select desktop. And then I'll select uh, publication one because that's where I have my photos. And I will need to select the first pick and then click insert. This is Africa. Nice land to be. So if this is your selection and you'll have, it is always good to, if at all you need to resize the image, use the, bot, the corners but press the shift key first and then click and reduce. So that you reduce the corners, you reduce the image evenly. You simply reduce the image evenly. Otherwise, it is a bad practice to do this kind of resizing. It will, it's not going to work for you. You will end up distorting the quality of the image. So reduce it evenly so that the length uh, adjusts adjust together with the height of the image. So if this is Africa, then we are talking of this. And you realize that the text is hiding behind the image. Then how would we bring it on top? We just need to arrange the layouts. You select what you want to bring on top. Right click at it and let's just right click at the edges. And then you select uh, bring to of uh, go to array. I want something to with order, and then I select uh, send to front. Bring to front, so that it appears in front of the text. So you can as well do this. Afro Farm Africa. All right. So I want it to to be flashing with that. So if you you can as well you, you click at it and then you use the navigation keys on your keyboard or the arrow keys so that you bring it next to what exactly where you want it to be. All right? That's good enough. Then we shall need a uh, a rectangle there and then you go for the shapes click at the rectangle and then draw your rectangle there and then move it down ok 
okay so that it touches at the bottom then after drawing that rectangle we want a color there we want some color on this rectangle but remember the concept your colors should be contrasting so you can click at the rectangle and then in the format formatting bar you need a bucket or what we call a fill color select at the fill color and then look out for the color that you need to use africa which kind of colors would you use for africa i love africa so select more colors if what you need to use is not among these ones select more colors and you have a palette with you you have a number of palettes that you can select from go in for the color I want to use coffee brown something to do with dark brown 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 and then click OK so I want to have that thin line thin white so I need to extend this upwards so if you want it to be clear to you and you just want a precise layout clear to you all you need to do is to zoom just press the control key on your keyboard appearing at the bottom left corner and then scroll your mouse use your mouse to scroll so that you can have a clear view then use the vertical scroll bar to enable you see where you want to end so that you have that nice white passing through all right then we can have this scrolling and I also want this afro to be white so that it can contrast with the background so I need to highlight the word afro and then change its font color so changing its font color all I need to do is to go to the font to the formatting bar because our formatting bar helps us to do the formatting and then I'll select the font color change it to white click outside so that we have that okay then we can uh, look out for the edges possibly edges let's try to look uh, okay we shall so have for now let's select that let's have that so I'm um, so that we have this this fill can as well uh, bring it down to contrast well I think this is better because it contrasts well with the background so I'm selecting that and I'm using my arrow keys to ensure that I have that alternatively I can as well put it down there but uh, it will uh, so let's let's take that and then the rest of this will be contrasting with this and I'll select the colors and select the brown that I've had and it contrasts like that okay afro and then bring it up slightly up all right so we have something like that afro farm africa and then we shall have the text so what do you want about afro what do you want us to know about afro farm africa okay then we shall select the text take note that with this kind of application you do not simply t begin typing just like in microsoft word you have to use a text box to ensure that you insert your text the right way precisely where you need it to be so I'll have just the text there and possibly it's better if you have already this text in Microsoft Word just copy it and paste it there okay so let me just type get trained in the modern uh, 
modern okay modern modern methods of farming in Africa meet meet outstanding farmers from uh, Masaka, Masaka, Uganda, Ambali, Bali, um, can talk of, uh, can talk people of people who are coming from uh, Barara. Okay, I uh, can talk of Jirohura. Zero Hora the Silas Farmers. We can talk of uh, Kayunga. We can talk of uh, uh, any place. This is just a demonstration anyway. And then because we want it to contrast and we want it to out to to outstand other text so we'll, this is quite big but let's also make this one bigger let's give it uh font this is too big okay then the question is where are they meeting okay so we shall need to add more text there and then the text that we need to be there okay so our fees this is a free free event free event and then because we want it to be able to contrast well so we shall uh, select uh, 22 and then the font uh, font color is white so that it can contrast well with the with the background free event and we want a line there so we shall put a line and then because we want it to be straight you click uh, press the shift key and then you draw the line using the left mouse button and then release the line and then release the shift key you can as well change the properties of this line. Uh, you want it to be thick, so that level. Okay, let me just reduce it. And then, which color is it? So we shall go in for the line colors there. Click at the line colors and make it white. Okay. Alternatively, you can select the line colors and make it creamish. So I'll go for more colors and make it a little cream, cream, cream. Okay, that kind of, yeah. So that it, at least because we have that kind of reddish or yellowish. So free event and uh, the key persons to speak. We can talk of uh, key persons to speak. And then we add more text free event with uh, with who uh, possibly we shall have Damien Damien will have to be there so we shall have Damien Serongoma so among the key people will be talking about farming uh, we have uh, uh, JM Chiguri uh, JM Chiguri we have Chiguri Cosmos We have uh, Rashaba. Uh, we can have uh, Daria. You you can name them, okay? So you just need to make sure that okay, these do not stand out, okay? They do not stand out, so you just make them slightly bigger. Okay, oh, that's big. Can have something to do with 16. 
or 14 okay something like that and then all right and we reduce the we contrast this with uh with this kind of uh not that we we make it white have a precise all right and then okay okay can have speakers there so we shall have so don't worry about the 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 text you can add as more and more text text and text fields so you can have key key speakers okay and then we highlight that and we give it size 12 and then uh font size white um we make it bold because i'm i'm just playing around with the fonts and as if i'm using microsoft word key speakers and there we are okay key speakers and we have this one so we can change this font uh to possibly i can have tahoma or the let me just select a font whenever you're working with fonts you need to select a font that will not be hard for whoever is going to look at your file whoever is going to look at your publication uh not squeeze his eyes when he's trying to look at what you have produced or what you have written have a font that is clear and easy to use easy to read and easy to use so can have that it is slightly easy to use and easy to read it's quite readable so we shall have that kind uh, and possibly let's add some some uh, illustrations so we shall insert a picture alternatively you can as well use this picture frame but uh, let me, for now let me just insert and select picture from where from a uh, file and I I need to bring in my gods there. Okay, it's quite big. So I just need to press the shift key, hold the bottom layer, and then don't release the shift key so that we have an even uh even resizing. So grab it and position it where you need it to be. Alright. Alternatively, you can as well have a background. We we're just going to have a background, okay? Uh, we have we need just to have one extra image from file, and then the background, this portrait to be part of my background. So, um, just let me just zoom it out. Okay. So if it's like that, all I need to do is to ensure that this whole uh, image is going to fill right from top to bottom and then press the shift key and then uh, I enclose everything in but yes it is now covering everything which I don't want so what I need to do is to push it at the back just push it at the back so right click at it and then select order send it to back not backward but back real you know when you're doing publication we are dealing with layers so if i push it at the back i cannot see my text anymore clearly so i need to play around with this and ensure that i have a better layout let's change its opacity and we see i'll select this uh, okay if i double click it will call it again so i need to work with the picture editing tool okay so in the picture editing tool i just need to make it faint to faint off so let's see picture format picture click at that format picture and then i just need to have a clean fade off I don't need to click to have this. Let me just look at colors and lines. I just need some transparency. Okay, I don't think this was going to. Let's check for the pictures. 
uh, brightness I just need it to be to reduce the brightness okay around there and then contrast okay let me just take everything off I just want to have a clean clean fed off crop I don't need to crop I just don't need that recolor let's use that compress uh, compression no we don't need to compress we just need to have a clean fed off okay so if we have check let's reset let's set this colors image colors grayish okay let's put just black white then click OK oh weird undo so undo button will help you or ctrl z will help you to do that okay set uh, transparent colors so if I select that okay select that transparent colors alright that doesn't work well let me just reduce more brightness just need to make it faint off so okay oh that's too much I just need to reduce it a little so that see it all right it's next to what I needed to do uh, it's just next select set transparent color all right it's just next to what I needed to do all right so if that's it uh, let's preview of what we have so far okay let's just make a preview of what we have so uh, my text will um, it will simply pick what I have in my work area so I select file and then select print preview print preview before you print out your final piece it's always good to print preview your work otherwise if you don't print preview your work many times you might end up printing something that is off from what you're supposed to have so it's better you make a print preview of your work so that you have a clear view of what how the actual component will look like and that's how it will look like that's how it will look like you realize that the, the, the image that was falling off is kind of reduced okay and the ones that were falling off the paper is simply picking what I have on my work area so if I'm to print out this and uh, I have like two pages on one sheet so a uh, whole page okay uh, I just want multiple pages I want two So I will have just one and then the other one will be on the other sheet. So if you want to have a different layout, uh, you can as well uh, select which portfolio, which, which uh, orientation you want to have. Uh, you can select the landscape. Just give this some time. It's processing something. Uh, okay, so what we want to have is that we want to have a landscape, not a portrait. Okay, so that once you select the landscape, it will automatically fit on uh, the page layout that we would wish to have. Okay, give it some time. It processes whatever that it needs to process. And we see the outcome. oops taking long let's just give it some time so when you're doing your publication ensure that uh, you are mindful of what which paper that you want to work with so if you look at that yes I have a clean layout 
and it's it's on one page okay that is my preview and how many copies do you need you need how many you set set the copies there if i need to have like 17 copies have the 17 copies there or you just increase the number to 17 right and there later you simply make a publication okay so i'm not pr printing right now i'm not interested in printing right now so all i need to do is to ensure that yes i have my layout uh, if i need to crop if you need to crop to cut off what you don't need you click at the crop select the image that you want to crop and use the cropping tool there click at the cropping tool and you simply crop off what you don't need so you can as well hold the corners to have a precise cropping cropping done the right way so i'll have that i'll resize it to flash with the margins there and i also resize this to flash with the margins there and then this bottom part to flash with the margins there so that it fits on one one area one line okay so nice and lovely so there we are you have learned how to utilize you utilize uh, these images and how to position and working you can have these guys you can have this uh, can also bring in the chicken uh, but remember you don't have to suffocate your image your your space you don't have to suffocate it you can have this chicken again and then resize it shift key and then hold that and resize it then you can have that on there size it again shift and then you have a precise resizing there okay can as well say okay let this one be on top yeah that's that's also acceptable and nice to look at can have that kind of and then you you kind of okay just shift i'm pressing i'm, I'm going to do something funny select that uh, press the shift key and then select another so when you press the shift key and press another it's as if you collect you you want to bond the two together and we have this grouping so when you click at that it becomes one so you just move one the rest it follows along okay so you can as well have that and then we simply copy and paste so it makes a copy right so it makes a copy for you and you can say okay i want it to have like that uh slightly to the left to the right left then top and then right okay and then okay that and that so i select that select that image grouped image then shift i select another grouped image and then I group again i just want to make a pattern something like that this is so it's now one and then copy and then paste oh i've just made another group that's interesting so I move it up and then uh, slightly and then okay slightly like that so you kind of make different patterns okay but uh, you just don't need to overdo it as long as I was just showing you uh, different ways of coming up with different different styles it's all about just the way you would wish it to have just the way you want it to be okay so it depends how you would wish it but my advice to you is that always try as much as possible to keep things simple just make sure that you keep everything simple as simple and nice just use the word kis keep it simple that's a nice way to go so let's just add one more uh one more component at the bottom there uh, slightly to the left and then uh to the right then the fill color i uh, just need it to black out 
uh, possibly cutting across up to the end and then uh, slightly there and then we add some text there add the text on top and yeah, contact us oh this is contact us and we don't see anything contact us we don't see anything that means the for the text color that we've chosen is black and it has black background black so all you need to do is select the text and then select that and then select white so that you can be able to read okay contact us now contact us now on uh, plus two five six plus two five six uh, seven zero zero Okay, seven zero zero forty ninety nine seven and K okay, can have the email address there. Oops. Can have the email addresses there. And then at gmail dot com. Yeah, so that even once you have someone who is interested in this, uh he can give you a call, he can contact you. Let's position this. So I'm going to position it this way. I'm flashing it with the left margin and then flashing it with the right margin. And then all I need to do is to make sure that the whole of this is centered. Okay. So select the text and center it. Tap. And it's all centered. Nice and lovely. So that's how we come up with this these different different publications. Let's lower this more light. Kind of. Okay, and we make it let's put some contrast. Alright. Even now uh, if suppose we make it grey, how does it look like? Grey. Good. Okay, so it's all about how you would wish it to appear, how you would wish your your publication to appear. So uh, that's all I had for you today and I hope that you've learned something to do with publication and you can as well do many more publications. You have now the right skills and you can get started with uh, publications using Microsoft uh, X Microsoft publisher as your tool until next time may God bless you stay safe we still need you thank you get immunized by the way we need you okay so get be safe and have fun using this application thank you